What M. Do you... Night Shyamalan? Shyamalan, yeah. You keep calling him Shyamalan. It's like, yeah. it's, like, it's like aluminum sidings and nucle nuclear power. Okay, so... It, for those who haven't been following the story up until now, M. Night Shyamalan fine, started out with Sixth Sense, which everyone went, wow, absolutely brilliant. Nobody saw the twist coming other than those people who read elsewhere, but there we go. And, uh, you know, what a great new talent. Then Unbreakable, which in fact, I think the smart money is on Unbreakable as Shyamalan's best and most underrated film. It's a, I think it's a really good piece of work and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't fated in the way that it ought to have been. Is that the one with the train crash? Yeah, it's yeah, and, it, and it, yeah, you liked it, right? Yeah, and, it, and of course, in terms of sort of comic book superheroes, clearly a forerunner of that TV series, which is on at the moment called clearly, clearly superheroes. It was. Superheroes, fine. And uh, and then signs, which was fine. You know, it was, it was yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, yeah, a little bit, yeah, a little bit more. And the, the village, which I liked, and people were starting to sort of people were starting to some extent to lose patience with the village. And then Lady in the Water. And I think the way I described Lady in the Water when it was first released was it was like watching somebody sitting in the cinema pouring petrol on their head and setting fire to themselves because it was M. Night Shyamalan's career going up in smoke and as our uh, email previously pointed out there is a, an absolutely absurd thing in it in which Shyamalan not only casts himself as the person who writes the book that's going to save the world and uh, becomes a martyr but he also has a movie critic who's completely hideous and completely terrible and a complete nincompoop who then gets brutally killed by, and I can't remember if it's the Snurfs or the Marfs or the Smidges or the Blidley Blongs and the, you know, the Hobdobbling Blongs as she comes out of the water from the Dringy Drangy. Remember, it's all the whole film is like that. And there is actually a line in it in which somebody says, I'm a Snurf, I'm a Smarf, what, I came from line, you know, that. And everyone went, it's it, he's lost the plot, he's just gone completely mad and it's, this is such a terrible film, even even Guy Ritchie, even Guy Ritchie would wake up in the morning and go, well, I might have made Revolver, but I didn't make The Lady in the Lake, so, you know, I can at least get a good night's sleep tonight. So there's a little sort of hiatus, a little period, and then he comes back with The Happening. Now, a couple of things happen with The Happening. First is that it's not shown until the last possible moment, because I only saw it on... The National Park Show, I think, was on Tuesday, and there was, I think, at some point, some concern about whether it was actually going to be shown at all. The Happening, the title itself, is a bit of an issue. The tagline... and Listen to what they've done here. We've sensed it. We've seen the signs. Oh. Now it's happening. OK, you see what they did there? They, I worked that they, one they, they do a Hulk style leapfrog over Unbreakable, the one nobody saw, over the village, the one nobody saw, and completely failing to mention Lady in the Lake, which was not Lady in the Lake, Lady in the Water, Lady in the Lake's Guinevere. Did he do Lady in Red as well? He did. <laughs> in that he should have done. That and was him. So the story, and if you've seen the trailer, you know the story. You've seen the trailer, right, for The Happening? Yeah. Okay. I, I thought the trailer looked quite good. Yeah, I exactly. I was quite intrigued by Exactly, that. okay. But here's a clip anyway. So the trailer is, Mark Wahlberg is a teacher when something happens. happens. Now, you probably noticed in that clip the moment when Mark Wahlberg goes, Central Park. That's kind of odd, which for me is up there on a par with the moment in the Karen Carpenter story, when Karen Carpenter says to her brother, is there anything about me in the newspaper review? And he says, oh, it just says the chubby drummer kept time. And it cuts to Karen Carpenter, she goes, chubby? Hmm. And it is, it's Central Park. Hmm. It's happening around plants and trees. Hmm. Uh, so there we are, it's all, now, you sit there watching the movie with a number of questions. The idea of the whole marketing campaign is what is it? What is the happening? What, what can it be? How can it be? Why can it be? And I'm sitting there going, OK, uh, on the one hand, I really like Mark Wahlberg. I think he's a very good actor. Uh, I think that M. Night Shyamalan, when he's, when he's good, is a very an adventurous uh, writer, director. Uh, you know, obviously he makes references to many of the movies that I really like. In this case, I think there are clear references to to, um, to the crazies, the George Romero film. And I think, you know, in the past he's referred to Friedkin movies. And so I, I understand his frame of reference. And I like the idea of this sort of ill-defined thing just happening because it's a sort of amorphous paranoia that what happens is people are walking around and then they stop and then they walk backwards a little bit. And then they all start... You know, it's something like a mass suicide. And how, how is, why? Is it a terrorist attack? Is it a biological thing? Is it a, what is it? Fine, okay. Those are the questions that you're meant to be asking yourself. But you end up going, 
why isn't this working? Why is Mark Wahlberg sounding so stilted? How do you pronounce Zui Dachanel? Why isn't this gelling for me? And I worried about it, and I worried about it, and I worried about it, and I finally figured that this is the problem for me. There's been some hideous reviews of the happening, which I think have been kind of just just a bit silly. You have to, you have to sort of admire the fact that he is attempting to make uh, you know an intelligent, slightly maybe it's not supernaturally, but you think it might be thriller, uh, but it doesn't work i think it doesn't work the reason it doesn't work for me in the end comes down to this there is an air of sanctimony about it that really bothers me in um lady in the water there's this whole thing about the critic who's complete fool and then gets eaten and Shyamalan casts himself as this visionary this absolutely brilliant visionary who will martyr himself in order to save the human race in uh, at a very early stage on in The Happening, I'm not, I won't say too much because if you are going to go and see it, I don't want to give away the plot, although it's no great plot twist. It's just a sort of, there is a general development of the central idea. At the very beginning, Mark Wahlberg's character says, there are some things that science explains away and science will come up with an explanation, but you know what? We'll never really know what it is. And there is a sense in Shyamalan's writing and in his direction of superciliousness, of I know what this is all about, and it's a morality tale, and you'd all better wise up, and I, and it was an awful sense of being talked down to. Because in the end, the idea, the revelation of the happening is not that particular, and it's not even really a revelation, there's a sort of a sense of Cloverfield in it, that you don't really know what's going on, and you're not really, you don't really have to know what's going on, you just have to know that something is, as the title suggests, happening. But what I didn't like was this kind of sense of, ah, well, you see, I'm ahead of the game and I'm smart and I know that these things are happening because you people are being bad to the planet and this is what's going to la -di -da -di -da -di -da. So I firstly bizarrely got the sense of being lectured and the second thing is that when he starts to kind of reveal what the rules of engagement may be, he then very swiftly starts breaking his own rules of engagement so there's a breaking of trust. The script is, I'm afraid, badly written in terms of the dialogue so people do have discussions in which people explain the plot to each other and to themselves and and i'll only say this very slightly enigmatically which i think is what a film called the happening deserves if you go see the happening and you buy into the explanation of why it's all happening and how it's all happening ask yourself this question who's making the wind blow right okay i'll bear that in mind so i'm going to write that one down actually yeah, seriously Sit what's there and watch the movie. The wind blow. Who or what is making the wind blow?